So, what are we doing today? This weekend. I'm driving to Sudbury, born and raised, the homeland. The homeland. Yeah. The land of rocks. The land of rocks. Not quite. I don't know why I'm watching the trailer. It's not We're heading off uh, westward. We're gonna uh, go see an old acquaintance of mine, friend of a friend, so to speak, and uh, he's been riding grizzlies and Kodiaks back when they were the leading mud machine back in the day. And what he does is some custom work for clutches. So uh, we're just getting ready for spring riding, and uh, it's we, raining. yeah, it's raining a little bit, and we figure uh, we'll give it a little more pep in its step I like that so we're taking project mama bear aptly named I love that mama bear yeah I'll take it and uh, we're gonna bring it out there and get some work done we're obviously not gonna bore you with uh, the whole trip I don't think you'd like uh, hours and hours of footage but of road but yeah we're gonna have a good time we're gonna visit some family that's where we're from and uh, while we're there also double down on a project so that's pretty cool you excited babe I'm so excited Get ready for some mud bogs this year. Yeah, there's Hopefully some big events coming up. The mud gods are nice to us this year. What events? Uh, oh, yeah. So we're with a club, RCATV. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, Redford County ATV Club is going to be doing a huge mud ride this year. And uh, we're going to be there present and ready to uh, try and take some awards home. First of its kind. It's been a while. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I think the uh, Snow Drifters Club or whatever they're called, they've been running it for a while out of Eganville. And uh, I think RCATV is going to be working with them this year. So we're going to try and uh, get out there and uh, take all the, because they're going to have like pulls, they're going to have drag races, they're going to have whatever, whatever. Drink so I'm going to show up and blow belts and diffs. And hopefully I can do the same now that we have <laughs> this project. Yeah. Don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try to break one bike at a time. Yeah. So. But, uh, yeah, last year we went to, well, every year we can, we go to the Sudbury. There's a Chemi mug box, and there's a couple rides up there that we go <clears throat> get some good mud, but it'll be nice to have something local yeah. this year for sure. We were looking at trying to do, like, what, how do you say that? Dunn bagging? Dunn boggin. Boggin bagging. I have no idea. <laughs> We were thinking about doing that, but I think we're going to just stick to our own local events and stuff like that for a little while. Yeah. Um, if you guys ever want to get out and ride with us, the best way to do so is just check out the RCATV website and uh, whatever events they have available there, we're definitely going to be at. Um, so that that's the best way to meet up. If you want to get some stickers in person, hang out, ride, whatever, that's uh, the best way to do it. We were thinking about doing our own meetup, but it uh, might be a little too soon. I know there's a few guys that would love to, or guys and gals. Yeah. I, I legally have to say gals now because we actually have like 7% female audience Yes, now. that's like triple. That, that's going up, it's going up. On YouTube. I really appreciate uh, the ladies getting involved in such a male heavy sport, I really yeah. do. Really changes shit up. What's up? And uh, yeah, so we're gonna get this sorted out. And then uh, the Kodiak that could will definitely be the Kodiak that can. You're all happy about it, eh? I'm so excited. We'll see how this goes and, uh, you know, we'll uh, take some footage of the process. We're going to show you what it's all about. You're going to meet the guru behind all the work. Um, that's basically it. So we will uh, continue the drive and for you guys it'll just be... We're recording now. I'm not ready. We're nothing but human. Okay, let's get some coffee. We had a few. Uh, had a good time last night. Beverages of choice. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I think we'll just leave that there. 
<laughs> it's early enough there that, uh, well, ouchie, but uh, that's all right. For the good of the channel, we're gonna carry on. <laughs> Sunglasses on face. Yeah. We're okay. We're, we're good. <laughs> we're all, <laughs> we got yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now uh, I'm in my hometown. So is Cass, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, not related. Uh, <laughs> not, yeah. It's a very small town. It's about a kilometer and a half stretch, and that's about it in the middle of nowhere. But one redeeming factor, we have a Tim Hortons. And as I'm talking about it, now. we're getting ready to pull into it already. That's how fast that was. All the way across town. All the way downtown. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, Get some coffee, drive to Buddy's house, which is just on the other side of town, as you can imagine. That's not very far away either. And uh, get to work, see what this guy has in store for us. Speaking of which, this, they redid it. Oh, they did touch up the Timmies. Nice. Oh, now Buddy can sell pot in the back. Much nicer. <laughs> Morning, can I take your order, please? I'll get an extra large double double. I'll do it. Sorry, is that a large or extra large? Extra large, double double. Okay. And uh, large steep tea, two milk, two sugar. Okay. That's going to be four fifty five. Drive through, please. Thank you. Debit. And then our room. I think a truck with like fourteen cup holders would be good. And steep tea. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. I, I don't. Look, does it have fourteen? I thought it was fifteen. This time on Maidville ATV and Outdoors, we count how many <laughs> cup holders my Ram Rebel has. And then that folds down, I'm pretty sure. You fold down. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good for YouTube? Used to. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. There we go. Happily married. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, young man. High five. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well done. So we're in the shop someone else's shop we're uh, in my hometown getting ready to customize Cass's bike you happy yeah so uh we're gonna get to playing with some weights and springs and all sorts of good stuff i don't know a whole lot about these wet clutches but i plan on knowing a lot more after today start ripping some plastics off and when everything's out of there we'll disassemble the clutch and talk about it my buddy here is uh, a bit of an og mutter always riding Kodiaks and Grizzlies, that kind of thing. That's a bit of his specialty. And uh, we have some parts that we're gonna sling on today and get this thing wheeling in no time. Yeah. We're moving along. Wee bit of a struggle, check that out. Still brand new, brand new. Yamaha in a nutshell. So that's off, what's next? Next, we'll be taking the primary cage off. Of course, another four 10 mils. Just everything's 10 mil. So to get this far, I think we use three tools. An Allen key, a screwdriver, and a 10 mil. <laughs> Can't do that with a Can-Am. I like making fun of Can-Am because I own one. <laughs> everything's so much harder. Well, I'm glad I brought this to you because I have no idea what I'm looking at clutch wise. I know a whole lot about mine, but not that. And I know you. And of course, when you do install them, make sure your dowels are in position. If not, you're going to have some clutch issues. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's some simple things to know. It does happen to people. Okay, so now we're, uh, what are we actually putting stuff into? Because, like, I have the EPI spring kit and stuff like that, and all the weights. Where's that going here? So your secondary spring obviously goes in behind. Okay. You'll see once I take it off, and then all your eight weights will be going in here. Like you have to take this dust cover off. Okay. And then for the wet clutch springs, you have to take the rest of it off, like your inner clutch cover and your... Is that what we're doing today? Or No. If you want, it's up to you. We're doing this part. Yeah. Whatever gets this thing wheeling is all we want. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. It'll wheelie. <laughs> okay, great. So let's just go ahead with that. <laughs> Whatever that means. So secondary's off, and that's what we're gonna change the spring on, eh? Yeah. So we'll get that swapped out. It's 
interesting interesting little scenario there it's not too bad you just pop the big nut off use your spring spring compressor to take it off swap out the spring put it back on call it a day and the spring is doing what exactly springs a little bit stiffer gives you better back shifting better belt tension for when you got big <laughs> tires on well that's perfect because that uh that's what we got going on we got these 30s to kick around so we don't want it to bog in the mud but it's all off there now so it's just two nuts and i'm sure this guy here uh, had a bit of tension behind it because of that spring but so that's all done and we're going to take those and uh, put them on the bench and adjust them put all the different stuff into it and talk about some of the things you do well, yeah you're doing a little bit of machining to the primary clutch get some more bottom end out of it oh yeah because eh? uh get a better starting ratio start getting rid of some of the junk out of there or what oh yeah you're taking the grease out be a greaseless setup after interesting really? so that's something we're gonna have to figure out so they call this a wet clutch because there's grease in it or is that because of the behind the primary yeah they call it a wet clutch because it has a wet centrifugal clutch in there oh on the inside so the outer clutches your primary and secondary are a dry clutch setup well not dry clutch because it has grease in it but it will yeah. be a dry clutch setup after and what's the point of the grease in it now it was only for noise oh okay oh. sweet Bye. So, uh, yeah, let's get to that. Get set up and start talking about this stuff. What an interesting thing. So is it going to be loud after? Well, it's already loud, Cass. You've got an after. RJWC on it. You've got that big chunk of billet and aluminum and stainless. Clutches would be nice and quiet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, let's do so that's your spring compressor? Yeah, it's a spring compressor. So all I did was loosen the nut off with the, the impact. Just enough, like a quarter turn. And then, of course... That takes forever. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta put the nut on. Bunch of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Just me like Aah! with the camera. <laughs> There's one that I'll have to do. Yep. He has to actually watch the footage <laughs> and sort through it. Yeah, so you just have to bring it down enough to release the tension off the nut. And then you just unscrew it. Well, that's cool. And then loosen it off. So it's just a controlled release. Yeah. That's all that. it is. I'm sure there's other ways to do it. Less safe. <laughs> yeah, you can actually, you could put a rim over it and then loosen it off and then the spring goes flying or you could just put your impact on it and hope loosen it off and hope for the best. <laughs> Hopefully you don't get it in the eyeball. That's such a really cool, simple mechanism. It's right from EPI. That's awesome. Yeah, that'd be cool. We had a bit of a, an evening with Mr. Murky last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Had some fun? Yep. Well, that's cool. It's the amazing stock secondary spring. Yeah. So we were just talking springs, and apparently we have several options, but we're going to be going with the gold one. So I'm there, gonna... there was the purple, which he was saying was like 27, 28 inch, like recommendation. That's more of like your trail, a little bit of mud, and then the gold is more of like a good mixture of mud trail, so it's not going to rev too high, and you can still get out there and do your normal thing. And then the white that we have from EPI is like the pure mud enthusiast, so like people really building mud builds. Like 32 inch tires yeah, or more. You get dedicated to it and apparently there's a spring after that, I guess, eh? And they're just going hardcore on it. So I think the gold will be our best mixture for this one for the secondary. And then we're going to do the weights on the primary, right? Yep. So we'll get to that. So we're going to go with the gold and it's sweet color. What do you think, buddy? Gold? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. right on. Cool. Once that's compressed, you can actually get the nut on there. Just have to compress it enough just till it bottoms out. You don't have to fully torque it down. Some people actually bend this big spring washer down. Oh, yeah. I've had uh, a couple customers do that. Yeah, just take your time to get enough. Once you got all the threads down and it's safe and you can torque it down proper, proper like. Just like that. A couple of ugga duggas from the impact. I'm good to go.
That's done. Uh, one, two, yeah, three yugas. <laughs> <laughs> just like that. So now we're just pulling off the dust shield and the half the primary. And the nice part about these is the reason the Can Am primary sucks so bad is they're actually a split, so you they slip a lot on the belts. But these are splined together, so they actually rotate as one. So when they grab the belt, they actually grab from both ends proper, no slip. So Yamaha has a good clutch to begin with, so they're you might as well just upgrade them and you. Instead of uh, you know going to get a CV tech or something like that and just one stop shop, but these can be milled and weighted and all sorts of stuff. And there's shim mods too. What do you think about the shim mods? We will be putting a one millimeter shim in with the machine sheave, which will give it like max low end possible. And I heard there's actually you don't really lose too much top end, if any at all. Some people even say you gain some. Is that true? Yeah, you can gain up to like five to seven miles an hour. All depending on tire size right yeah but most times for like low range if you want to go from like mud hole to mud hole then you could actually leave in a low range a lot longer because you get such a wider range so you could do probably 40 42 mile an hour in hole wow depending on your setup and there's all the the grease in there fancy grease got your nice o-ring get rid of that and then that whole inner piece just comes out. Look at all that, eh? And there's the cam plate, plastic slides. And what we're switching is those rollers there. we are switching the rollers there, and we'll also be machining the inside of the sheath right there. Take that down so the weights actually sit in farther. Cam plate sits in lower, which spaces out your primary. Belt drops lower in the primary, sits higher in the secondary. And you get a better starting ratio for more bottom end performance and if you want to get technical a little bit of late uh, weight reduction <laughs> yeah a little bit of weight reduction <clears throat> save about uh half a pound oh there you go i'll make up for that and <laughs> i also machine out the outer roller channel so the weight rolls out farther which gives you more top end which gives you about five to seven miles an hour extra speed so we're actually going to be uh it's not more everyone's like oh well it's a trade-off you can't have one without the other well there's ways to modify and actually grab from both ends which is pretty cool but uh, we're going to clean up this grease and then uh, i guess we're going to be heading down to your little mill there and do that yeah we'll get all that done so this is pretty simple i mean you're just you grab whatever gram weight you want and then you have like a sleeve over top right yeah and that's just to protect the roller or what yeah it's just a plastic, it's a, like a Delrin plastic. It's a low friction plastic, nice and smooth, very durable. So Puts up to a lot of abuse. So what are the stock ones versus what we're putting in there for the weights? Actually, these ones are like 30 grams in a Kodiak. I don't know why they put such a heavy weight in them. And we're gonna go to? 16. 16. And then you said plus the, the, the cover on it, that uh, plastic you're talking about, it, it ends up being like an 18? Yeah, so like the EPI kits, when you get them, you'll get like a mixture of 14 and 16 gram steel weights. And then, which each, like the, the plastic covers, they actually weigh about 2 grams. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So it you, ends up being like an 18. So if you put an 18 and the covers back over, then they're going to be somewhere closer to a 20. Yeah. Overall. All right, so it's pretty simple. I, I mean, if you're following along in the video and you're doing the same thing, well... I think you guys get this point, but we're going to clean out the grease. It's actually going to be greaseless. We're going to go uh, mill it down a little bit and play with some room. And then uh, you just put in whatever weights you're looking for. And uh, you're recommending the 16s for the Kodiak? The 16s would be a better option. Yeah. So that's what we'll do is we'll go with the 16s because our EPI kit actually came with 16s and uh, 18s. But uh, we're going to go with whatever uh, he recommends and we're going to play with that. So. We're getting ready to mill her up. Open up those channels, let the rollers move around. Get rid of some weight. It's a cool little gizmo you got here. Oh yeah, she works pretty good. For the most part. Put our safety squints on, get that thing centered up, locked in, and... and you said uh, last year you did about 200 of these, eh? Yeah, I got pretty busy. Remember how much anxiety I had drilling holes in my plastic? 
Yeah, well, he's about to drill into your clutch. <laughs> and if I screw up, I got a couple more. <laughs> Fair enough. shined up rollers can move in farther like we were talking about i'm not going to bore you with another hour of this stuff but uh yeah that's a good job this little machine does here eh? oh yeah she works pretty good right on almost due for a new bit Everywhere where the roller sits now is all uh, polished up and poured it out a little bit so I can roll closer on the inside and roll out too and that provides a little more low and top, eh? Oh, yeah. yeah, so there's going to be lots of room in there. Change the weights like we were talking about earlier. And uh, he also slimmed down some of these walls so we don't get anything uh, stuck there so the slider can actually go all the way down and up nice and freely. And, the other side's actually done too there, so just just cleaned up a little bit so it doesn't bite the belt, eh? Yeah. Yeah. So that's all done too. So ta-da, there you go. That's uh part one of this little fiasco. And uh yeah, we're just cleaning it up there and making sure there's no grease left, so it's gonna be a greaseless system and that's it. So there it is all set up. We got uh 14 and 16 gram weights. Uh, with the little sheave over top there, that's what another gram. Another two grams with the plastic uh, cover. A little bit, yeah, almost two grams with the plastic over top. So we're basically running 16 and 18 with that all together, and they're offset in each pocket because you don't want to put like too many on one side and not the rest because you'll be imbalanced. So now that is a greaseless setup. He's just cleaning the cover on the other side. That's going to fit in here, and then we can start putting it all back together. And we now have the gold spring for the secondary. Um, then we're ready to rip. So, yeah, we just basically go backwards from here and give this thing a test drive. So, Cass and I were going to order a second belt for this thing, but because it's Yamaha, we definitely don't. Belt's brandy, brandy, brandy new. So, not even going to bother with that. I'm a Can Am guy, so I'm used to bringing, uh, you know, a slew of parts with me everywhere I go. But this thing looks great. It's riding real high. Um, one thing I did want to mention because uh, my expert here today did bring up a good point. When you're actually putting your primary on, just make sure your belt's not pinched. So you actually just lift the belt a little bit and then snug it down even more and it'll be good to go. And then obviously just rotate your secondary until everything's nice and properly seated. So uh, now the belt's riding a little high and it's perfect. It's exactly what we're looking for covers on and uh, we're happy so we're gonna bolt her up and then take her for a quick jaunt i just got off the phone with uh, my dealer <laughs> and he's like what do you need a belt for i said that's yeah exactly what i'm calling we don't need it and he's like yeah you'll never burn a belt i said well i'm married to a can-am well, owner you see so we gotta carry some spares. <laughs> well goes, we might yeah. burn a belt don't speak too soon but it yeah. is a yamaha much better than can-am uh, for that for he sure he said he sells like two a year yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm like she's
would usually run the quads when our neighbor is kids sleeping. <laughs> Obviously the wet concrete and stuff I'm never going to grip, but... Good. Yeah, it's really, really good. Yeah. That thing's awesome. Oh, the RGWCs are wild. Well, especially, actually, it's way better on a mono piston, believe it or not. They just have that clap to it. You like it? Good. Let's get her home. We've got a long day. Hey guys, so what feels like day 573? We're on day three, actually. We're just heading home. We're passing through Nipissing. We uh, headed up to Sudbury, saw some friends, saw some family. We were up late last night, so we're struggling a little bit. Yeah. But uh, shout out to Brian Farr from BF Clutching. Clutching. I want to say BF Goodrich. Is that a thing? Yes. Okay. BF Clutching on Facebook. Kyle's Complete, shaking his completely head at me. Completely unrelated yeah. to BF. <laughs> so my bad. Brian Farr from BF Clutching on Facebook. Check him out. He knows a ton about Yamaha clutching. Uh, he does this in his sleep basically. He let us come into the shop with him. He showed us around, showed us exactly what his process was, which is super interesting. I can't say I've ever seen a Yamaha clutch pulled apart before. I've seen Kyle's clutch open numerous times. Yeah. But uh, Yamaha does it different. They have a good clutch. They, they have a really good clutch. So you can just modify them and do the job. Um, there's stuff available, but I mean, this modification is proving itself, and I can't wait to long term test it. I'm going to long term test it. But speaking of which, we've got some sweet events coming up. We're collaborating with a few people on some mud events in the near future. So check that out. And uh, we just made a post on Facebook in our group and our page about the different rides that we're going to be doing with RCATV this coming season. So check that out. Uh, it's probably the best way to get out riding with us if that's what you're looking to do. Um, but yeah, all the dates are there. B101 or Bust is probably the biggest one of the year. It's a weekend thing, family friendly. Tons of different levels of riding skills uh, and trails. Uh, bonfires at night, that whole thing. So if you're interested in going to any of the events and you want a little bit more information on them, comment on our page, on our post, in our group, message us. You know how to get a hold of us and uh, we'll point you in the right direction. Did I miss anything? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, that's good. We'll see you next time.